What's up? This is the Friday Sports Riot on SportstownChicago.com. I'm Ryan Hoppy, And I'm Ryan Stupridge. Call the show, 630-403-5200. That's 630-403-5200. And Ryan, where can you be found on the Twitter machine? You can follow me on Twitter at Ryan Stupridge, S-T-U-P-R-I-C-H. How about you, Hoppy? I'm at Hoppy Radio 893. All right, enough of the shenanigans. On the phone line, he is a freelance writer and also can be heard on Rivet News Radio. Gabe Salgado is on the line. What's up, Gabe? i got to admit, I like the opening theme music. kind of gets your adrenaline going there. <laughs> it gets you all pumped up to talk about the NFL draft. So what was your take on the draft last night? Well, you know, um, there were some picks that surprised me, like, you know, Buffalo trading up to get Sammy Watkins. I know Cleveland had some pressing needs that they needed to address, but, you know, Buffalo, you know, gets another, uh, you know, offensive weapon that they could use to help out E.J. Manuel and compliment C.J. Spiller there. Um, uh, you know, Blake Bortles didn't surprise me that he was the first quarterback taken. Uh, he was very high on a lot of people's draft boards. You know, I was disappointed that the Bears weren't able to land uh, Aaron Donald. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Kyle Fuller isn't a bad pick. That was actually a solid pick for them, although I think they could have gotten, you know, with the safety picks with Calvin Pryor and Ha ha, Clinton Dix. Either way, but you know, so far, I mean, there were some surprises, but for the most part, I think everybody addressed, uh, you know, their needs that they needed to throw on their teams. Um, how did you like uh, the pick of Sammy Watkins, and how do you think uh, Sammy Watkins and EJ Manuel can be for the upcoming season? Well, the main thing is for EJ Manuel to stay healthy. You know, he had some injuries his rookie year. I know the offensive line didn't always give him the best protection. So if he can stay healthy and if the line can keep him upright, you know, Sammy Watkins will be a valuable weapon, especially mm-hmm. with both him and C.J. Spiller in the passing game. Definitely can help him out tremendously. You know, but Buffalo also has some needs on the defensive side of the ball as well. So, you know, they've they got to address that as well. What is your take on Blake Bortles? Because people are trying to compare him to Big Ben. Could he be that same type of player for Jacksonville, a team and sort of a fan base that has been looking for something to go right for them? Well, you know, if he can improve his arm strength, then, you know, he could become a little more stable in the pocket, definitely. You know, he has a tendency to move around a little bit. There have been questions about his arm strength, but there's no question he's got the size comparable to Big Ben. You know, he's got the accuracy. And let's not forget, he didn't decide to enter the NFL draft until after he won the uh, Fiesta Bowl. Right. Yeah. You know, that was, that was kind of what propelled him there. You know, he had that big national platform, uh, you know, winning the Fiesta Bowl, so that kind of pushed him you know, towards, you know, entering the draft. But, you know, obviously Jacksonville has needed a, you know, star caliber quarterback from quite some time. You know, Blaine Gabbert hasn't quite been the answer for him. Chad Henney definitely hasn't been the answer for him. And drafted Denard Robinson last year, but they don't use him at quarterback unless they're running the read option of the Wildcat. So, they de- you know, hopefully this will definitely be, you know, what they need. Obviously, you know, Jack- Jaguars fans have been clamoring for Tim Tebow for a long time. Right. But, you know, I think that if uh, Boyles can improve his arm strength and if he can – you know, be as consistent as he was in college. I definitely think that the Jaguars, you know, have a good thing going there. Um, you know, I like the picks that the Vikings made uh, last night with getting Teddy Bridgewater and Anthony Barr. Uh, do you think that having those two players could really impact the Vikings? They could be um, a force to be reckoned with here in the NFC North? I think they'll definitely be an improved team. You know, Teddy Bridgewater, I know there was a lot of people knocking him based upon his uh, pre-draft workouts, but the thing you have to remember is because the draft was pushed back so late this year, there were so many pre-draft workouts there, so that there wasn't really there was a lot of margin for error, and I think that's you know a lot of people you know wait you know way too much on you know the mistakes that Bridgewater did make. But let's not forget he ran a pro-style offense in college, and you know he's proven to be you know consistent. Yes, he has overthrown some balls at times, but for the most part he's been a consistent quarterback. And let's not forget he has Adrian Peterson behind him, so that'll take you know some of the pressure off of him. I don't think that Minnesota is going to win the division, but I think it's uh, definitely a step in the right direction. We're talking with Gabe Salgado here on SportstownChicago.com. And uh, um, how good do you think Jadavian Clowney can be for the Texans? Do you think that, 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 uh, he, that he could really uh, change this team up and they could be um, a good team? Well, putting him and J.J. Watt together on the same defensive line you know, will definitely add another dimension to that right. pass rush. Uh, but let's not forget that the Texans still need a quarterback, and there still are some decent quarterbacks available. And, you know, the whole po- the main thing is that, you know, everybody needs to stay healthy. You know, aside from, you know, whatever inconsistency they had on offense, they had a lot of injuries last year as well. How dominant could the Packers be with ha-ha Clinton Dix 
And did the Bears miss out by not taking him? You know, I think the Bears did miss out to some degree. You know, they also missed out by not taking Calvin Pryor as well. You know, but the thing with Kyle Fuller is that they believe he can be converted to safety someday. As for the Packers, you know, um, you know, they definitely, they've always had a solid secondary. I think this just makes them better. You know, putting them out there with, you know, with Woodson ought to make, you know, make some, uh, you know, things happen. But, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, uh, you know, Green Bay, they definitely need to improve their pass rushing. You know, they, they brought in Julius Peppers. I don't know if he's the answer for that considering his age and, you know, his inconsistency last year. But uh, I definitely think that the Bears did miss out to some degree by not taking him. Um, who do you think the Bears should target tonight for the draft um, as they'll have um, another chance to get somebody really good? I'd love to see them, you know, pick a defensive lineman, preferably either Steven Sewitt or Lewis Nix. You know, those okay. guys are still available. I definitely think those guys can contribute right off the bat. You know, Lewis Nix, you know, he dropped, you know, a fair amount of weight, you know, to take uh, the pressure off of his knees, which is why he had the knee problem last year. I know Steven Sewitt had some injury issues as well, but part of that was because he didn't have Lewis Nix next to him for most of the season. So I definitely think both of those guys can contribute from day one. And you take a look at the Bears' defensive line. Yes, they signed Jared Allen, but considering he's 32 years old, how many good years does he have left in him? Nate Collins is coming off a knee surgery. Uh, Stephen Paye is in a contract year, but he's had some injuries. Jeremiah Ratliff hasn't played a full season in a couple of years, so they definitely need uh, some young blood on the defensive line that could definitely uh, – improve the pass rush and, you know, definitely stop the run. I think they can get that with either uh, Knicks or to it. And, Gabe, here's the big one from the night that the national media could not get enough of. What is your take of Johnny Manziel dropping the 22nd overall and him being taken by the Browns? Could he bring the dog pound back to prominence, or is this just the same thing for Cleveland where they're just bad? Well, Cleveland already has a bunch of quarterbacks on the roster already, especially when they brought in Vince Young last week, two weeks ago, whatever it was. But, you know, it doesn't surprise me that Johnny Manziel uh, fell so far. I honestly thought that he wasn't even going to be taken in the first round since he didn't get taken in the top ten. You know, the thing about Johnny Manziel is, you know, I mean, aside from his height, you know, he you know, he uh, has a tendency to just, you know, move around too much and, you know, while he does have the mobility, the thing about it is in the NFL, the pass rushes are bigger, stronger, faster, and with the different types of blitz schemes, he's not going to be able to get away with that. The other thing to take into consideration, too, is that he spent his entire college career in the shotgun, didn't really take any snaps from underneath center, but that's definitely some things that he's going to have to work on. I've heard, you know, people compare him to Tim Tebow, some think he's better than Tebow, some think he's worse than Tebow. You know, while he does have the athletic ability, he does have the arm strength, there's still some fundamentals that he needs to work on. And the major difference between Manziel and Tim Tebow is that Tim Tebow is already a proven winner. He's proven that he can win, you know, the big games. Manziel has yet to prove that. And uh, before we let you go, where can people find your work online? You, oh, well, you know, follow me on Twitter at Gabe Salgado82. That's G A B E S A L G A D O A two. I'm always linking okay. stuff there. Um, you could also follow me on Facebook as well. Just type Gabe Salgado in the search engine on Facebook. You can find me there as well. Um, and another thing, too, before I let you guys go, I definitely want to talk about Jimmy Garoppolo because I was oh, yeah. surprised that sure. I was surprised that he wasn't taken last night. You know, yeah, I was too. The, yeah, the te- uh, you know the teams that needed quarterbacks. It really surprised me. Now, when Northwestern held their pro day in March, I was there, and they invited some of the other local players that were there as well. And uh, Jimmy Garoppolo is as good as advertised. He's got the accuracy. He's got the arm strength. He's got the quick release. He's a uh, right. quick decision maker. And, you know, he's the real deal. I know a lot of people are going to, you know, think twice before drafting him because he played at a small school. But, you know, i got to tell you, he's definitely the real deal. And I definitely think that he could help out a team. And I saw that I saw that personally. He's definitely, uh, you know, a can't-miss pick. And, you know, I mean, there are still some teams that need quarterbacks. And, you know, I would hope that he'll go in the second round tonight. What team could he join that he would just make an impact on and maybe make them good? Well, you know, you take a look at, you know, a team like Houston that need, needs a quarterback or, you know, take a look at teams that, you know, have aging quarterbacks that, you know, eventually are going to need to, you know, mold for the future. So uh, there, there's any number of places that he could wind up, but it's definitely somebody that, you know, they should take while they have the chance to give him, especially if they have that need. Well, Gabe, have a good weekend, my man, and we'd love to have you on the Friday Sports Riot again. Uh, definitely, and I appreciate you guys for having me, and, you know, hopefully... Hopefully the Bears, you know, will have another top pick tonight. Yeah, hopefully. Sounds right. good. Thanks, Gabe. Bye, right, thanks, guys. And that was Gabe Salgado. 
You can check him out on Twitter. And he also is on Rivet News Radio. So go to your fancy app shop if you have an iPhone or whatever and type in Rivet News Radio and check him out there. I, I believe his uh, Twitter handle is Gabe Salgado82. That's what I thought it was. Yes. I was afraid I was going to say it wrong. Yeah. All right. If you want to call the show and talk about everything that Gabe said, it is 630-403-5200. That's 630 630- 403 5200. And who is coming up at 430? Super, I'm rich. Check out my net worth. <laughs> at uh, 430, we're going to have Travis Rogers, who is uh, heard on Yahoo Sports Radio and KLAA in LA, aka Angels Radio 980. Yeah. We will be right back on the Friday Sports Riot on SportstownChicago.com. BRB. Friday Sports Riot on SportstownChicago.com.